This is imidazoline poisoning. Imidazolines are a class of medications that are found in over-the-counter treatments for either conjunctival injection or nasal congestion. Popular brands include Visine, which is tetrahydralazine, Clear Eyes, which is nafazoline, Afrin, which is oxymetazolone, and Sinutab, which is xylometazoline. And again, here you see this is a topical nasal decongestion, and this is a topical conjunctival decongestion or vasoconstrictor. In this flashcard, we make reference to one of the urban legends that's out there. You drew here the computer. This is actually a Commodore 64 from 1986. And the urban legend refers to something known as the Visine prank. And this can be looked up on websites such as snoops.com. The Visine prank is one wherein it's thought that several drops of a nasal or ocular decongestion into a person's drink can cause them to have nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea. That's unfortunately is not true. However, several drops to someone's drink can cause them to have profound hypotension, syncope, and collapse. If one were to administer anywhere from a quarter to a half of a bottle to someone's drink and they were to consume it unknowingly, it could potentially kill the individual. So for this, our classic scenario is an individual goes into a bar, he's giving the bartender a hard time, the bartender has heard of the urban legend known as the Visine prank, they put half of a bottle of Visine into the individual's drink, the person consumes that, and several minutes later, patient gets lightheaded, ataxic, confused, syncopies, and collapses to the floor. Initially, the patient's blood pressure, when consuming this type of chemical, will increase, but then decrease profoundly. Their temperature will drop as they become hypotensive and their heart rate will exhibit reflex tachycardia. Patients can also potentially exhibit nausea, vomiting, seizures, apnea, coma, and death. Ironically, diarrhea does not occur, and that's what the Visine prank is based on, causing diarrhea in these individuals. Now, the mechanism of action for this toxidrome is quite interesting. These here are alpha agonists. When applied topically, either into the nose, to the mucous membranes, or onto the eye, they act as alpha agonists, and these are alpha-2 receptor agonists, and they cause vasoconstriction. That'll decrease the stuffiness of the nose and constrict the blood vessels in the conjunctiva. However, when consumed orally, such as here, these alpha-2 agonists will be absorbed systemically and then cross the blood-brain barrier, enter into the brain, have a similar effect to clonidine, which we know is a central acting alpha-2 agonist. Therefore, just like clonidine overdose, hypertension initially, followed by profound hypotension, reflex tachycardia, somnolence and collapse. As far as treatment, treatment's going to be symptomatic. Patient can be placed in a Trendelenburg position. IV fluids, and if IV fluids uh, do not address the hypotension well enough, and the patient still has refractory hypotension, one can consider administering intravenous dopamine or norepinephrine vasopressors. In this case, activated charcoal can be administered, but yet by the time the patient comes to you, he'll probably be obtunded, and therefore activated charcoal by mouth would be contraindicated. There is no specific antidote for this. Just as some pearls, the Visine prank is not true, and is quite dangerous because it can cause death. And again, a small child would be much more susceptible to death 
from the ingestion of either of these types of over-the-counter medications than a full-grown adult. And for the medical students out there, I always teach that over-the-counter nasal decongestions such as Afrin or Sinutab, if used for a period of time greater than five days, can cause an addiction phenomenon, whereas the abrupt discontinuation of a nasal decongestion causes the classic rebound rhinitis metamentosa.